tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday we are doing a uh, three-day fast that we're going to finish on Wednesday morning. I would like to challenge each one of you who um, when we fast it goes in one year and gets out of the other year for you and you're part of the hungry gen family if you're visitors just ignore what i'm saying but if you're part of this family and you tell your neighbors that i'm your pastor <laughs> i met one uh, my neighbor yesterday <laughs> it was so funny uh that we had a power uh, outage uh, power went out of the house so i went around meeting neighbors and uh and so he comes up to me and we, we start a dialogue and uh, so he, he he knows that i'm a pastor and is i'm like how did you know that i'm a pastor he says my other neighbors told me they go to your church I was like I haven't seen them in three years I was like now I'm gonna go cast the devils out of them I'm like what is this they're inviting other neighbors to the church and they don't come here and stuff so and uh, you know like and that's how a lot of people do that they, they go to LA I go to the church but actually they don't come and so if you if you're part of this family if you're part of this family I want to I want to challenge you right now this coming month starting tomorrow is going to be the craziest month we have had in the history of our church some things are happening behind the scenes you're not aware of and I'm not at liberty to share because it will throw you in panic right now if I'll share with you. That honestly things are hanging by a thread in the realm of the spirit and we have to step in right now like never before to pray and to fast. And just because I'm calm, I'm like a duck. On the outside I'm calm, on the inside everything is <laughs> and stuff and so because what, what God has in plan and what the devil is doing right now is crazy. And so this coming month with the Race to Deliver conference I'm asking you that if you're not going to take three days to fast that you for the next three days if in the morning instead you're sleeping or going to gym if you could just take those three days and show up here for prayer from six to seven if you are serving at the conference I ask you that you press in that you come on Monday we're praying and fasting for the conference on Tuesday we have 20 people going to Guatemala trip in the in a week from now we want to see hundreds of healings and salvations so every person going to Guatemala and every person wishes to go to Guatemala I want you to be here on Tuesday morning at six to seven and on Wednesday we are coming in to pray and fast for our Easter service for the first time in the history of our church we're going to have three services in one weekend and it's going to be just a foretaste of what's going to happen later this year and so we're not special there's nothing super super amazing about us the only thing that we have that's going for us is that we know how to get on our knees to cry out to God who lives in heaven and say God release your grace through people like us who still have an accent sometimes who still have a problem with our driving record because we gotten saved only a year ago some of you you still get in your car and you have to breathe so that your car starts you know we, we, we got limitations we're not where we're supposed to be but we know one thing is that God doesn't reward the proud he rewards the humble and we know how to get on our knees and we know how to cry out to God somebody say amen somebody say amen when I was very young you know the Lord gave me this small vision that the church will be like a Winko grocery store where people will come by thousands to our church by thousands to our church and they will not just come get entertained see the lights and the smoke and hear a sermon but they will see a miracle they will see God that their life will be changed and I felt God challenged me and he said this the reason why Winko is so successful is because behind the Winko there is these dirty doors that the semi trucks come every single day these doors is called prayer and fasting Oh, well, nobody likes to do that the moment I talk about prayer someone like, <laughs> because that's what these doors are but if there is nobody keeping the doors open in the back and there is no semi trucks coming in my friends sooner or later there will be nobody coming through these doors as well and so if you have been mature enough if you have walked with God for more than one day I challenge you today could we open the back doors because in about five days people from all around the United States will be coming through the front doors of hungry generation because the back doors are being open can somebody give God some praise right now can somebody give God some praise right now? Can somebody lift your voice and give God some praise right now? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God make us a praying church. God make us a praying church. Somebody say amen. God make us a praying church. We don't want to be a straying church. We don't want to be a weird church. We want to be a praying church. And for those of you who are coming for the first time, and so today, it, this service might be very, very untraditional. But 
we're hungry for God we're sick and tired of things being the same we genuinely genuinely want to see the move of God we want to see ladies like Auri and, and so many others getting up and saying I had this but Jesus after prayer he healed me I was on drugs but Jesus changed me you know I was lost in religion but I met God and God transformed my life and for that to happen we have to be a praying church somebody say amen for that to happen we have to be a praying church you can be religious so much can be done today without the Holy Spirit but we are want to be a church that, that relies on the Holy Spirit relies on the presence of God relies on the glory of God last weekend I was in Sioux Falls in Sioux Falls Dakota South Dakota in the church of uh, Almira's church where is Almira here she is in the realm of the spirit in the kids zone amen so Almira's church met her wonderful family wonderful parents I also met a lady named Galena if you can put the photo behind me please uh, a lady named Galena no 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 that's that's from yesterday the other one yeah so this lady that I point my finger to she had asthma for I'm not sure how many years she had an asthma for prior to two years ago um, I was in one city in North Carolina and we did a prayer for healing and this lady she I think has six or seven children I don't remember how many children she has now but she had asthma in that meeting she was there in North Carolina and she agreed in prayer that we were praying in faith and from that service on until today this lady this mother of about seven or eight children is completely cured of asthma come on come on church God is worthy God is good it's been crazy because I've been seeing a lot of asthma. I know a girl in Pennsylvania who's been healed, lifetime of asthma, was healed in one service. There's one in Ohio who was healed about five years ago of asthma and then came and prayed for her family, dad and some other siblings and the Lord healed them of asthma. There's a guy in Olympia, a little boy who was healed about six years ago right here from asthma. And on our first race to deliver conference, if you remember, Nehemiah Cruz was also healed of asthma. Why am I sharing this? Because I truly believe. No, I don't, we don't see every person healed, but we do see people touched by Jesus and they get healed. And we give God the glory. I don't care how you feel right now, but I want to give God some praise right now. I want to give God some glory right now. I want to say, Jesus, thank you. Jesus, I crown you. Jesus, to you belong the praise. Jesus, to you belong the honor. Jesus there is nobody like you by your stripes we are healed in your blood there is power to deliver from the devil in your blood there is power to deliver from sin hallelujah 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 thank you Jesus yesterday I met a family and excuse me the day before I met a family that originally from Philippines if now we can put the other photo um, this lady this lady right there she actually lives in Manila Philippines She's been following Hungry Gen Ministry for a few years and when she found out that I was in Philippines she was begging us to go to Manila because that's where she lives. The crazy part is her husband and their son lives in Vancouver. So three weeks ago or two weeks ago I was in Vancouver and this boy came out. I did not know that he had intrusive suicidal tendencies he was taking medication for. The moment I stopped praying for him a demon started to manifest. It came out, he collapsed on the floor. I found out this weekend is that after that incident he stopped taking medicine and God cured him. Now we prayed for him one more time because he had a schizophrenia and they came he was taking still one medicine uh, every day and that was prescribed by the doctor and he came in and he said I believe that if you pray for me one more time the Lord will deliver me. So I stopped praying for him and he collapsed and the demon just screamed like very very violently just came out and after he's like that's it I feel it's gone. And so, and mom asked me, you know, if they could start to stop taking medicine. I told them to go to the doctor, get examined, and only then to stop taking medicine. I genuinely believe that within a few weeks, we're going to hear a testimony that not only from a suicidal tendency, but schizophrenia is defeated by the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. God, worthy, worthy of all the honor, all the praise. We love you, Jesus. Come on, lift your hands right now for just a few moments. Begin to just thank the Lord. Begin to thank the Lord right now for His goodness. Begin to thank the Lord right now for His faithfulness. 
begin to thank the Lord right now that the one drop of his blood is greater than any sin you anybody committed one drop of his power is greater than any power of the devil any power of sickness we love you Jesus we love you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah we praise you God we praise you God hallelujah hallelujah thank you Lord we thank you Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus in just a few weeks we're going to Guatemala and then um, we have our Easter service something we're super excited for but what we're gonna do this morning is that because we're preparing for the conference I want to direct the service to something that I have uh, I rarely rarely do this I have this and I have this I'm gonna use this today so I got a message during the worship and uh, because I use my Bible on the phone I had to find a physical Bible <laughs> to read from if you have a Bible I want you to open with me and uh, and we're gonna read the Bible <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm sorry if you have a phone open your phone <laughs> somebody was like well, what did you say the Bible I don't have Bible app yes Bible app <laughs> open your Bible app you version and if you lost your streaks it's time to catch up on your streaks mm, the Lord have mercy amen I have a person in California who got so inspired by me to read his Bible and he posted on his Instagram that he read the Bible for 365 days and uh, he posted the streaks but at that moment that he posted the streaks I had zero <laughs> I was so embarrassed I mean I read the Bible but I just not you version Bible app and so uh, but the Bible is good amen Matthew chapter 8 it says the following Matthew chapter 8 verse 5 I'm gonna let everybody because there's gonna be notes no notes on the back so open open your Bible with me please uh, open your you version Bible at Matthew chapter 8 and I would like to open uh, verse 11 8 11 8 11 if you're there say amen if you're getting there say wait for me you can connect to free Wi-Fi by the way um, in Hungry Gen for those of you who are running low on the and the thing that uh, T-Mobile provides for you Matthew 8 and verse 11 I tell you many will come from the east and the west and recline at table with Abraham Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven I'm gonna read to you again many will come somebody say I'm part of that many church neighbor say I'm part of that many so not just few many will come from east and the west and recline at the table with Abraham Isaac and Jacob meaning they're not just going to come to heaven but they're actually going to be in the elite like they're gonna have a special connection to some of the greatest heroes in the Bible they're going to be in the green room with Abraham Isaac and Jacob and not they are gonna recline there means they are going to chill they're going to relax in heaven and they're gonna be with Abraham because see I, I can tell you one thing Abraham is gonna be pretty busy in heaven Abraham is gonna have a lot of people trying to be close to him trying to have an access to him trying to hang out with him and Jesus says that many people will have an access to recline with Abraham Isaac and Jacob I'm part of that many what about you okay verse 12 and now we're going to talk about some other many while the sons of the kingdom these are not sinners these are not people who are do not know God watch this these are not people who are far from God these are who who come on who are they any children of God we have in this room come on any children of God we have in this room all right so some of you we're gonna have an article for salvation because you're not sure I know you're a little bit scared right now of this verse but anybody is believes they're a child of God today come on come on praise be to God you're a child of God you might have not met your mama or your daddy you might not like family you came from but if you're a child of God it's a good reason to celebrate and thank God for that some people say you know I was born this way I was born that way well, when you get born again you become part of a new family and that is a good thing somebody say amen and the Bible says in verse 12 while the sons of the kingdom 
And this is where it gets a little bit iffy. Gets thrown into the darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus says, many will come and recline with Abraham. And he says, sons of the kingdom. Now in this verse we believe that he references to people who have a biological connection to Abraham by being born in a Jewish family. He's not just relating to us Christians who are born again because we're born again we're going to heaven but Jesus in here says he references this to a particular guy who was a centurion who was not of a Jewish descent who comes and who had a great faith and Jesus says he says I've never found a faith like of this guy this guy's faith is the great you have to understand one thing not a lot of things can impress God God is not impressed with Apple TV plus He's not impressed with Apple's new credit card. He's not impressed with pretty much nothing that comes out out of this planet. God does go like, oh wow, that's surprising. What God gets impressed by is how great of a faith a Roman centurion who had a high position like a Roman guy he had a hundred people that were responsible to him and accountable to him and Jesus gets impressed by that he pauses for a moment before he declares healing to come into his house and he says let, let me tell you guys something I already have been in heaven I can see what's going to happen he says many will come from America many will come from Mexico many will come from India many will come from China and he says not only they will make it to heaven he says they're actually going to recline in one of the like special places with Abraham and he says some of you boys who think that just because you were born Jewish or some of you boys and girls who think that just because you're a member of the church he says you're not going to necessarily have that access and so as I'm reading this verse I ask myself a question today how can I be part of the many I don't want to just have a son title I want to be part of those many who will come from the east and from the west and to recline at Abraham's dining table. What did this centurion have that God wants us to have today? A few things that I want to highlight right now that we're going to put it into practice. He had a servant, not a son, who was sick. He came to Jesus and begged it wasn't his son, it wasn't his mama, it wasn't his grandma. The guy wasn't even a relative of his. In those days if you had a servant who is sick you get rid of him and you go on the market and you buy a new one. He easily could have got written the servant. Instead he goes in and looks for Jesus and begs Jesus to come and heal his servant. Not only that he stops Jesus in the middle and says you can't come into my house because I'm not good enough. And he doesn't cancel the miracle because of his not good enough. He says, Jesus, could you make it faster? My unworthiness doesn't cancel my miracle. I just want to speed it up. And he says, let me explain Jesus how this works. I'm a man under authority. I tell one guy to do it. He does it. I tell another guy to do it. He does it. And so I know you're a man also under authority and you walk in authority. And I have soldiers. You have words. I tell my soldiers to go get a job done. You can tell your word and your word can go and get a job done. And your word travels a lot faster than my soldiers. Could you just release a word so my servant, not a son, not a mama, not a mother-in-law, not an uncle, not an auntie, not a nephew, a servant. It's just a property. But could you release a word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus pauses and says, many will come to the kingdom and recline with Abraham. But the sons will be cast out. I want us right now to understand Race to Deliver Conference is our opportunity to exercise compassion for people we don't know. For people like Centurion who you could easily say, I don't care about them. Or who cares what's happening to somebody in some other state, in some other country. That's not my mom. That's not my child. That's not my relative. That's not my who will sit with Abraham? It's those who are not indifferent to the needs of people they're not related to. Can I ask Julia to come up? Can I ask Casey to come up? <laughs> Completely unplanned. They have no idea what's happening. I don't know also so don't worry. 
we'll, we'll, we're gonna be figuring this, figuring this out as we go. I don't know Julia. Last year I did not know that she had an accident where the driver of the car went on a yellow light and uh, somebody else hit the car so bad that Julia ended up paralyzed from neck down. All of her nerves in her hands, in her feet were completely dead. She was tied to a wheelchair, tied to a wheelchair. She couldn't even hold her hands and she drank through a straw, ate through a straw for six months and all while laying in Maryland paralyzed from neck down she told her parents do not buy me a wheelchair because that's not how I'm going to live they borrow a wheelchair and a year ago at this time come to a city named Pasco and people saw her at the airport people saw her at the airport and at the airplane and they wheeled her up at the race to deliver conference the conference you were fasting for the conference you were praying for the conference we were giving for and the person you did not even know the person you they're not your relative they're not your mom they're not your cousin and your sister and the power of Jesus came at that conference and the first service is her nerves came back she started to feel her nerves and then the next day or the, a little bit later she walked out from her wheelchair they got into a car and she the first place she went to to God be the glory to McDonald's and ate with her hands and ate with her mouth this there is a Julie that's coming in five days to Tri Cities another one there is going to be another person that's coming that is not related to you and this conference for you or this retreat this this thing for you might be like oh this is great hungry Jen is doing but I want to let you know God is not going to let people recline with Abraham who only cared for their family it's those people who say God I know I have a position in the Roman Empire I know I have a title I know I am financially secure but my servant Romans they get rid of their servants but there's something about me I can't just let him die I'm gonna ask you Jesus to heal my servant he can't even get to you Jesus he's so sick he is paralyzed but I'm gonna go there I'm gonna carve out time out of my busy schedule and say Jesus I'm not even a Jewish man he's not my son please heal my servant I want us next three days when we're gonna fast you know God is looking at that because some of you are saying but I'm fine but the people that are coming to this conference, you will see more wheelchairs at this conference than you've seen in your life. I remember seeing one time a father who brought four mentally challenged daughters. It's heartbreaking. You see him holding, please forgive me, like animals because they're completely not in their right mind. He's holding two of them on one hand, two of them on the other hand, crying. Say, God, touch my daughters. I want to mess your Christianity up just a little bit because the guys who will be sharing a meal with Abraham are not just those people who are building 401k, finishing education, building a nice house, building a good ministry and caring for their own needs. Those things are great but God wants to graduate us a little bit higher. If we're gonna make an impact on a nation, God says enlarge your heart. Come on somebody, come on somebody. Some of you, your comfort zone is just, you're so comfortable right now in where you're staying. And what I want to do is I want to stretch you right now because it's good that you have a position. Maybe you're like a centurion, you have a management position in your company. Maybe you have millions of dollars in your bank account. That is great. But honestly, can I tell you something that's going to qualify you to sit with Abraham in heaven and recline with Abraham and Abraham say, so how was your life there? So where did you live? Tell me more about it. And you're going to begin to share about what you've been doing for other people. We're going to take a moment to pray in a moment and I want us to pray that God will give us compassion for those that are not related to us. For those that are, they're not your blood. I heard a testimony yesterday of a young man, David, who for 18 years trained himself to go to the most remote, remote area in India. They said this is one of the last places on the planet that has not heard the gospel. Nobody even knows their language yet. 
they don't even know how many people live there the government of India has put a blockage where you cannot go to that area they don't know whether 40 people live there or 500 and this young man studied for years he got all kinds of immunization he, he, he read a hundred books a year before turning 18 so he can go there he ran marathon so he can train his body he took different medications and then finally against the law he hired some people in the boat he packed himself and decided to go to that tribe first time he, he came waved and they started to shooting at him he pulled back next day he did it again and then the third day he finally broke through went in there only to be cut into pieces and they found his body all disfigured some of you saw it's all over the news some people call him crazy reckless they say how dare you what kind of a parents will let him do that some people have one mission he had a mission he wanted to bring the gospel to those people he's dead he died with his life but there, there's gonna be a day where that tribe will be open to the gospel but somebody sacrificed his life whole life his dreams his only desire was this I want an unknown tribe I'm not related to them I don't know them. I want them to hear about Jesus I'm not asking you to give your body to be disfigured I'm asking you today could you make your heart just a little bit bigger that it's not just for you and your family could you be like a centurion who could have easily honestly thrown that servant off the board and says get out of here you're no good to me but instead he goes in and looks to Jesus's attention and Jesus says I like that I came to die for the world you're like me you want to help others let's begin to ask God right now whatever you say, just begin to put, put your hand on your heart begin to say God give me compassion for those who don't know you God it, within not just this weekend but just as a person father I pray that you will give me compassion today Julia she's finishing internship next week today she's part of our family today she is a worshiper she brings other people to Christ today she's part of our family but a year ago she was coming in she was just a guest there will be so many like these coming at this conference let's begin to pray right now open up your lips wherever you are let's begin to pray Julie I'm gonna ask you to lead that prayer could you do that Father God right now we're just asking that you will give us a heart of compassion God that we will go out and that our hearts will be broken for the things that break yours God that we will reach those people that others just pass by God that, that we will go in and that we will impact those people that are in need of a touch from you that are in need of that one person to say hey this is who Jesus is this is what he can do for you God we want to go out and we want to impact the nations God give us that heart give us that heart to go and to reach those people and send us out as laborers God and give us that boldness that we can impact the nations in Jesus name yes Lord we ask you right now father in the name of Jesus Christ father in the name of Jesus Christ come on this is not I'm, I'm not just trying to get the prayer and get it going I want your heart to be touched right now pray right now until your heart moves pray right now until something shifts in your heart pray right now until there's emotion in your heart right now begin to say God give me the heart that centurion had but he didn't just care for himself he didn't just care for his biological family but he also cared for those who he did not know for those that he did not have biological connection to father I pray that this coming race to deliver conference I pray this coming Easter service I pray father at this Guatemala trip I pray father God as we go about our life that we will be a people who will eventually will recline with Abraham God because we did not live just for our own self we did not live just for our own ministry we did not live for our prosperity God we did not live for our rank and our position Lord but we cared for those God that maybe nobody else wanted to care we cared for those God that maybe nobody else wanted to treasure God we took him in as our own God we took their needs as our needs God we pray we fasted and we gave Lord God because their problem was our problem God we know that you have masses prepared for us God we know that you're gonna re reach nations through our ministry God we know father that our ministry will touch the world through our music through our books God but I pray that you will put the world inside of our heart right now God dear spirit of the living God dear spirit of the living God let compassion fall upon our church right now let compassion fall upon our church right now 
let compassion fall upon our church right now let fire fall right now Holy Spirit let fire fall right now Holy Spirit let fire fall right now Holy Spirit God it's not just about the masses God it's about that one it's about that one it's about that one Lord it's about that one Lord we pray for our hearts to be stretched God we pray for our hearts to be moved this morning Lord God that we will do something that we will step out of our comfort zone that we will step out of our complacency that we will step out of our mediocrity God we will step uh, step out of just sitting on the church pew and doing absolutely nothing with our life Lord that we will step out of just what's convenient to us Lord we all have certain conveniences that you will take us out of that God and we will see the miracles that we will see the miracles God that we will see the miracles in Jesus name I want you to see that is centurion he cares for for his servant and that compassion drives him to the bible says this is that he came appealing to him saying lord my servant is lying paralyzed at home suffering terribly i love the fact that he didn't just have the compassion but he comes to jesus and he asks jesus he asks jesus says jesus my servant is laying at home and he is suffering terribly. Suffering terribly. Suffering. You know there is suffering when you have a fever, running nose. There is suffering when you strain your back and it's difficult to get into the car and difficult to get up. But there are sufferings that are terrible terrible I'm talking about not just mild not just the ones you can manage with a little bit of painkillers and a little bit of medicine but there are sufferings that are that are terrible like what happened to Julia what happened to Casey you know last year Casey came to our conference for the first time and Casey's story some of you know is is very 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 difficult life that she lived at the young age her parents dedicated her to the religion of Satanism and for those of you who watch Chronicles of Sabrina on Netflix and others and you think that Satanism is just about spells and it's cool and it's nice and everything I want to tell you something those are TV shows those are not realities Satanism is not cool cute and sexy it's not just about horror it's about making you get pregnant so you can kill your own baby so you can get a certain access in Satanism it's being abused it's being raped it's being molested it's exactly what happened to Casey and demons one by one started to come into her life to the point that she started losing her mind your mind gets so much pressure that it breaks and it develops into fragments multiple personality it becomes you become schizophrenic you start hearing voices you become suicidal and well last year Casey came in you could have looked at her and said you know what I don't know who this person is but it's the person that was suffering terribly person who was looking for help we're not related to her none of you here in this room are but right there at that conference the Spirit of God who's seen the years years and years of abuse and pain and trying to end her life he came and all the prayers you prayed God used those prayers to create an appointment and right there the devils and the demons when they came out of her she went back home not only the 13 or 15 medications that she took for 10 years she stops that but God started to give her hope her face brightened up and today Casey is finishing nine month internship program as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Today Casey is worshiping Jesus. But it's not only that but Jesus treats people way 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 differently. He comes to give people life and more abundantly. Jesus doesn't abuse, He heals people. He heals their hearts, He heals their soul and so, so for some of you who are coming today and saying why are you guys so crazy? See that's why I'm crazy because it's not just for me, it's not just emotion, it's a life change. 
it's a transformation of life it's somebody going from darkness into light it's somebody going from sickness into perfect health it's somebody who was slicing the wrist putting a knife to their throat trying to hang themselves to today lifting their hands and say Jesus you're the life giver Jesus you're the prince of peace Jesus you defeated the devil Jesus you raised me from the dead Jesus you gave me purpose and you gave me hope and I praise you and I love you and I worship you if Jesus has done something in your life lift your hands right now take next 60 seconds give God some praise give God some praise give God some praise give God some praise right now come on lift your voice hallelujah hallelujah we love you Lord we love you Lord we love you Lord Come on, a few more seconds, few more seconds. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Begin to thank Him right now. Begin to thank Him right now. Begin to thank Him right now that Jesus rescues, Jesus saves. Some of you, you've now maybe done those things, but you've done other things that Jesus had mercy on you. Hallelujah. Consume me with your fire. Jesus, we say you are holy. Come on, every hand raised right now. Let us tell the Lord, you are worthy. Come on, every hand raised right now. Say, Jesus, you are worthy. Remember what he did for you. Remember how he saved you. Remember how he healed you. Remember how people looked at you and said, They'll, you'll never make it. Remember how the devil laughed at you when you fell, kept falling into the same thing. And God stretched his hand and he picked you up from that thing that you couldn't pick yourself up. Remember when you were hopeless. Remember when you were purposeless, when you thought life is over. And God was standing on the other side and said, Devil, watch me. I'm not done with that one. I will pick that one up. I will place their feet upon the rock and they will testify on my goodness. And devil, they will slap you. And devil, they they will crush your kingdom and I will use that weak one I will use that difficult one I will use that addicted one to shake your kingdom devil oh we love you Lord hallelujah hallelujah Jesus we praise you God Casey, how are you feeling? Amazing. Amazing. How do you feel about Jesus? What do you feel like God has done in the last these last last, month, last nine months? Um, it's been an incredible journey. It hasn't been easy, but the support in Jesus is life changing. Like I mean, there's no other high like Him. God is not done with Casey, just like he's not done with you, just like he's not done with me, amen. When people testify here, it's not because their life, that's it, there's no more battles after that. We're just thanking God for what he's done and trusting for what he's planning still to do. But I want you to see this servant, the Bible says, he suffered terribly. And some terrible sufferings are emotional, some are spiritual and some are, are demonic. We have people that are coming to this conference. We have people that are coming to our services many times. It's because the sufferings that they have are terrible. And right now what we're going to do is we're going to pray for every person. The way this centurion did. He came to Jesus and he said, My servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. I want to believe that at this conference we're going to see more people getting out of wheelchairs than we ever seen before. I am believing that at this conference we're going to see many blind eyes open, many deaf ears open. I want to believe today that we're going to pray for right now who have tumors and who are staring death in the face, who are counting months because the doctor has told them that they have five or four months and comforting their children. And I want to look today with them, stand with them today in our prayer and look death in the face and says, you're not going to take that one. 
I want to stand with those people today who have attempted suicide many times and they're staring that demon in the eye. I want us to stand with them right now and look at that demon in the eye and say, you're not going to take that one. In the name of Jesus. For those who are suffering terribly, we're going to pray for them right now. I told you this is not going to be a conventional service. But see, to see stuff like this, guys, the, the stuff like that doesn't happen an accident. Somebody's praying for it. Somebody's standing in the faith. Somebody's saying, putting their food aside and saying, Lord, I want, I want you to move on their behalf. You saved me, God. You helped me. You know, I grew up in a Christian home. My parents didn't they dedicate me to Satan. I owe to people who didn't have that to pray for them. I had one person come to me in Sioux Falls last week and say, Vlad, why are people why is God allowing people in other nations who don't know Him to go to hell? I said, bro, you got this wrong. Why do you allow that? God already gave His Son. God already gave His Spirit and God gave you to them. And why are you? And I'm like, and I don't want to be the person who would say, God, why are you allowing? God is asking, Vlad, why is people like her in the radius of two hours from your church doing that? Well, you just kumbaya, my Lord, just all about me in the church. I don't want to be that church. I don't want to be that guy. And I don't want you to be that either. We're going to recline with Abraham. Why? Because we're not just living for ourselves. We are interceding for those who are suffering terribly. Join hands with the person next to you. Let's begin to pray for every person that is suffering. Every person that is struggling right now. Let's begin to pray right now that God is going to bring healing, salvation and deliverance to them in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, right now, Lord, we pray, God, for healings, Lord. Healings in the name of Jesus, Lord. Not just now a race to deliver, God, but we are sending, God. Send the messengers, God. Send your, Lord, comforter, Holy Spirit. God, that people will be changed, that they would be delivered, God. God, what we would expect for our mom, our brother, our sister, our family member, God. We expect you to do in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we are believing, we are declaring, God, that what you said is a finished work, Lord. Not because we are finished, Lord, but because you're just getting started in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare your blood. We declare your blood over cancer, your blood over diseases and sicknesses, God, because you said it, Lord. Lord, that settles it in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask you, Holy Spirit, that you begin to bring your spirit in this place, that you begin to heal sicknesses, God, that seems impossible. We ask you that you give us such a heart, God, for our servants, God, just like we would for our mom or for our family. Holy Spirit, God, break your hearts, God. We did not deserve your love, God. We did not deserve your grace, God. We did not deserve your mercy. And I ask you, God, do you grant, God, the mercy that you granted me, God, for our servants, God. Grant your mercy that you granted me, God, for our city, God. We don't want to be a lukewarm Christian, God. We ask you, God, that we begin to care for those, God, that are lost, God. Oh, Holy Spirit, God, begin to bring your spirit of revival over us, God, over our city in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Yes, Father, we just continue to pray. We ask Holy Spirit for your outpouring of your power, of your anointing in this conference, Lord. We declare and decree, Father, for your manifestation to come, God, and every demonic power to be removed in the name of Jesus over people's lives, over our city, wherever people are coming from every state, Lord. We pray we're going to bring an impact in the name of Jesus, that we're not going to stop, we're not going to be complacent, but God, we're going to go to the next level in the mighty name of Jesus. We will take the territory that Satan has taken from us, and we take it back, we take it back in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for your overflow in Jesus' mighty name. Every hand raised right now, begin to worship Jesus. Begin to receive God's compassion. Begin to receive God's fire. Begin to receive God's mercy. Begin to see the nations. We're gonna make an impact on the world. We're gonna make an impact on the nations. God will use us to touch those who are suffering terribly. Jesus. Give it up to man by which we can receive. 
your heart Jesus give us a little bit more of your fire give us a little bit more of your compassion break our heart for what breaks yours God that we will live for what you died for Jesus this coming month God whether it's in Guatemala whether it's in race to deliver whether it's an Easter service God that we will live for what you died for Jesus hallelujah hallelujah we love you God we love you God keep standing for just a moment if, if you physically can I want you to see this it says after that Jesus told him I will come and heal him I believe God's response to our prayer right now is I will come I will come to race to deliver I will come to Guatemala trip I will heal them I will show mercy on them I will show kindness on them I will help them but something happened from the time that he was prayed that prayer until until the coming the centurion felt insecure and he replied Lord I am not worthy to have you come under my roof but only say a word and my servant will be healed I want you to let you I want to let you know this is that anytime you're in the presence of God you might be aware of your unworthiness you might be aware of your shortcomings. You might be aware of the fact, Vlad, but I'm not, my life is not what it's supposed to be. I want to tell you this, you can have a great faith anchored in a soul that doesn't feel worthy. It's okay not to feel worthy as long as you know someone who is. I don't feel worthy because I know someone who is worthy and that's why I say worthy Jesus if you don't feel worthy in this room today don't cancel your miracle don't say Jesus because I'm not worthy don't heal me no say Jesus because I'm not worthy heal me faster because I'm not worthy Jesus don't help me with my marriage because I, I messed up no 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 the centurion did not say because I'm not worthy don't don't, don't forget about the servant see so many people they cancel their miracle because of their unworthiness but I want to tell you something your unworthiness is not big enough to cancel God's love for you and therefore no matter how you feel about yourself right now no matter where you find yourself today right now you can tell God I'm not worthy but you say God I know you are worthy and I trust in your mercy I trust in your love I trust in your faithfulness and I trust in your compassion your hand upon a part of your body where there is pain I'm gonna pray that the Word of God will come and heal your body right now in the name of Jesus fix your eyes on his worth not your worthiness 
your unworthiness put that aside release your faith and say Jesus you are faithful I know this problem maybe have been there for 20 years or 15 years in the name of Jesus Christ I command that sickness in the name of Jesus right now to go I command that back pain because of that accident because of the fitness workouts that you did maybe improperly and you strained your back in the name of Jesus be healed right now be healed right now I rebuke that asthma right now every problem with bronchitis in the name of Jesus be healed right now I curse that tumor and that lump and that growth and that cancerous cell in Jesus mighty name be uprooted from your body right now in the name of Jesus Lord release healing to those kidneys right now Lord release healing to those kidneys right now in the name of Jesus I command the deafness to go right now in the name of Jesus I command the blindness and the nearsightedness and where you don't see clearly to be healed in Jesus name in the name of Jesus Christ be healed in your joints right now be healed in your knees right now be healed in your elbows right now and your shoulders in the name of Jesus every spasm and paralysis in your body in the name of Jesus we speak God's healing right now every allergic reaction to certain foods and every gastritis I break its grip over your life right now in Jesus mighty name that problem in the neck right now in the name of Jesus Holy Ghost fire be healed in Jesus name Father I thank you Father I praise you Father I exalt you right now in the name of Jesus in the next few seconds I'm gonna count to three and I'm gonna ask you to shout the name Jesus and as you do that I believe miracles are gonna start breaking out I believe you will as you're gonna release that shout that pain is gonna go that pain is gonna go he said I am not worthy but say a word scripture says he sent his word and he healed them you know that that word is in your mouth right now and you're gonna send it you're going to release that word and there is no greater word on this planet than the word Jesus. It's that word demons tremble in front of. It's that word that cancer knows that word. Arthritis knows that word. And so when I'm going to count to three, I'm going to ask you to release your faith with me. And we're going to give Jesus that shout. And as we lift that shout, we're going to believe that that back pain is going to be gone. And that problem with the vision is going to be cured today. And not because you feel faith, but because you know He is good. Are you going to do that with me? I can't hear you. Are you going to do that with me? One, two, three. Jesus! Somebody's neck is being healed right now. Somebody's lower back is being healed right now. Release them right now. Yes! God of our Savior. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you begin to test your body, begin to just test your body. If you had that pain, begin to glorify God. Begin to glorify God. We thank you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We praise you God. Come on, let's just take 60 seconds and just praise His name. 60 seconds and just praise His name. 60 seconds and just praise His name. Say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that you are restoring me. I thank you, Lord God, that you are healing those rashes. Those rashes in my skin. You are healing that right now, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Let's just lift His name up right now. Alamos, alamos. We need one more of you.
camera can we uh, pray to? That camera, okay. Could we could we turn around and look at that camera right now? We're gonna pray. There are people who are sick watching us right now. There are whole families that are sick at home right now. If you can zoom that out a little bit so that we can we can pray. For, I want you to do that one. Uh, yeah, yeah, zoom out. Yeah. Okay, so let's switch to the other camera. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, to the other camera. Uh, the camera person, can you wave at us, please? I, I don't see you. I don't see who's there. Um, let's just stretch our hands toward the camera right now. We're going to stretch our hands and we're going to begin to pray right now. I want you to pray for them like you pray for your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, we speak healing right now to that household. I rebuke every fever. I rebuke right now every single demonic fever. I rebuke right now every single physical fever every illness right now to put those people on the bed in the name of Jesus Christ hot flashes headaches in the name of Jesus we rebuke that right now and I command that to leave in the name of Jesus Christ I command the healing to come into that household I command that restoration to come into that life right now in the name of Jesus Christ we agree together right now Lord we send your word to that house the way you send your word into the centurion's house we send that word into that house God in the other state we send that word into that house in Pasco in Richland and in Kenwick in the name of Jesus Christ we pray be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name if you're an adult and you're watching and your children are sick I challenge you right now lay hands on your children and command healing to come and you will see that they will recover for the glory of God can somebody say amen church I want you to put your hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ in the room this size there is always probably somebody who does not know the Lord as their personal Lord and Savior. I'm going to ask you something right now. If I can ask everybody to bow your head and close your eyes for just a moment. If you are, whether you've been coming for some time or maybe you're visiting us for the first time or perhaps you're watching this live stream right now and you're not where you're supposed to be with Jesus Christ. You have not given your life to the Lord. And maybe you just consider yourself as a religious person, Christian or Catholic, but you know you're not where you're supposed to be with God. Bible says it is appointed unto men to die and then there's a judgment we're gonna face God and without relationship with Jesus that pays for our sin he pays for our sin if we don't receive that gift of salvation we have to pay for our own sins and that payment the Bible says is eternal death it's separation from God it's just you paying your dues but Jesus knows that you cannot pay that on your own so he came and took that payment for you and today he's offering you a free gift of salvation it's free for you but it cost him his dear life if you're recognizing that you are in need of that salvation you're in need of that forgiveness maybe your life is falling apart or perhaps your life is good on the outside but your world on the inside is so empty you're looking for something I know what you're looking for it's not something it's someone his name is Jesus it's not an accident that you are in this room today it's not an accident that you found us with how you found this church it's not an accident you're watching us on live stream right now the Lord is knocking on your heart if you're not where you're supposed to be with the Lord or you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior I will count to three and when I do so I'm gonna ask you to slip up your hand so I can pray with you if you're watching us on live stream you can comment below and say I want to get right with God and the online moderator will connect with you right there if you're not where you're supposed to be with the Lord I'm gonna count to three the devil's gonna already whisper to you right now and say don't you dare to do it you're fine don't you dare to do it but I'm telling you that's the devil you push the devil aside because he wants to drag you to hell with him he wants to keep you in the, your life to be the same way as it is right now but today we're gonna embarrass the devil and we're gonna bring you the gift that Jesus died for you to give that is new life one two three if you're not where you're supposed to be just raise that hand high I want to see it I want to pray with you I want to pray thank you I want to pray with you thank you thank you thank you for being bold thank you if you want to get right with the Lord today I'm going to wait for you for a few more seconds thank you Jesus thank you Lord I love you Lord we praise you God thank you I'm going to ask you to do something that's even bolder right now I'm going to ask you to quickly come out of your seat those who can raise your hand or wanted to raise your hand they just come right here there's already people here there's already people coming just come just come thank you just come just come young man come come don't be afraid don't be afraid come come right here if you brought a friend with you and, and they would like to do it you can come with them right now we're gonna wait for a few more seconds I know that there's more people who wanted to do that your heart is beating faster and it's the Lord talking to you and stop don't be afraid push that fear aside you can come and we're gonna pray with you that's the greatest day when you give your life to the Lord being healed and being delivered is good 
But giving life to Jesus is the greatest gift that anybody can receive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Church, stretch your hands right now. We're just going to bless them right now. We're going to pray for them. Father, we just ask you for your mercy and for your grace in each one of their lives, God. We bless them right now, Lord. We pray that you will touch them, that you will deliver them today, God. We pray, that, Father, that you will just turn their hearts back to you, Lord. Turn their hearts back to you, Lord. Bring them the gift of salvation. Bring them the gift of new life, God. We commit blessing into their lives, God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching this content. I know this was a blessing to you. We would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something, you can be notified. Don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.